And now, for the mad prophet of the airwaves, we give you Outback Radio. I'm telling you. The U.S. decision to pump 600 billion freshly printed dollars into its economy. Now, the move is an attempt to revive the country's finances, but will result in a devaluation of the dollar. We'll construct a legal regime to make indefinite detention legal. I think it's time we ask ourselves if we still know the freedoms that were intended for us by the founding fathers. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The last nail is being driven into the coffin of the American Republic, yet Congress remains in total denial as our liberties are rapidly fading before our eyes. The process is propelled by unwarranted fear and ignorance as to the true meaning of liberty. It is driven by economic myths, fallacies, and irrational good intentions. The rule of law is constantly rejected, and authoritarian answers are offered as panaceas for all our problems. Runaway welfareism is used to benefit the rich at the expense of the middle class. Who would have ever thought that the current generation and Congress would stand idly by and watch such a rapid disintegration of the American Republic? Characteristic of this epic event is the casual acceptance by the people and the political leaders of the unitary uh, presidency, which is equivalent to granting dictatorial powers to the president. Our presidents can now, on their own, order assassinations, including American citizens, operate secret military tribunals, engage in torture, enforce indefinite imprisonments without due process, order searches and seizures without proper warrants, gutting the Fourth Amendment. Ignore the 60-day rule for reporting to the Congress the nature of any military operation as required by the War Power Resolution. Continue the Patriot Act abuses without oversight. Wage war at will. Treat all Americans as suspected terrorists at airports with TSA groping and nude x-raying. And the Federal Reserve accommodates by counterfeiting the funds needed and not paid for by taxation and borrowing, permitting runaway spending, endless debt, and special interest bailouts. And all of this is not enough. The abuses and usurpations of the war power are soon to be codified in the National Defense Authorization Act now rapidly moving its way through Congress. Instead of repealing the 2001 authorization for the use of military force, as we should now that bin Laden is dead and gone, Congress is planning to massively increase the war power of the president. Though an opportunity... All right, here's Charlie. All right, thank you, Jumpin' Johnny Flash behind the glass tonight. I would like to introduce the one, the only, Agent Zero, as our new co-host to Outback Radio. Hello, everybody. Thank you. And tonight, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Ron Paul for opening the door for us to explain Agenda 21, conspiracy or not. Most people really don't understand Agenda 21, so what we're going to do is try to break it down into layman's terms so it doesn't sound so politically correct and good for you. Right. I don't know, maybe you would like me to go on a, uh, a little overview, Agent Zero, just to explain uh, Agenda 21 to the people. I think that'd be a good idea. All righty. See, Agenda 21 is what they call sustainable development and was created through the United Nations. It is the blueprint for depopulization and total control 
under the banner of saving the environment. It is like a head of a beast that has a thousand tentacles, all originating from the United Nations. The three primary tools that are used are man-made global warming, water shortages, endangered species acts, and we can all want clean air, water, land, and food, etc., but phony environmentalism is designed to probably create fear in order to implement the policies of tyranny. Uh, for example, the globalists use global warming fear-mongering in order to usher in the cap-and-trade and carbon tax schemes without debate. The globalists use governments and other major groups, NGOs, non-governmental organizations, to force their policies. But when you truly understand Agenda 21 Sustainable Development, you can recognize it in your own neighborhood taking place because its collectivist battle to take control is from a global all the way down to a national, all the way down to a local level. You can be affected by the world by taking action locally when you understand the rules and the tools that these globalists are using, or elitists, whatever you prefer to call them. But the purpose tonight is for us to kind of morph it down from a global, national level to maybe understand it a little bit better. So when it starts coming to your neighborhoods, you'll see the replications and maybe stop its expansion. Because I know there's a bunch of people and a bunch of states standing up against it. If you just cruise the net, you'll see all about states standing up to it. But... I mean, it was originally brought into fact as a non-binding, voluntarily implemented action plan of the United Nations. It is a product of what they called the, the United Nations Conference on Environment and Development held in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil in 1992. It is an action agenda for the United Nations, other multilateral organizations, and individual governments around the world that can be executed at local, national, and global levels, like I said before. The 21 in uh, Agenda 21 refers to the 21st century. It has been aff affirmed in uh, Agenda 21's 300-page document that is divided into 40 chapters that has been grouped into four sections, which you can get on the Internet. It's, if you look up the Earth Summit Agenda 21 from the United Nations, and it has four sections, and it will break it down into a PDF form. I mean, obviously, we do not have time to read the entire Agenda 21 thing tonight, but if you do want to really understand how it's directed towards combating poverty in developing nations, but really promoting health and keeping them where they are so they can just take over their land and the conservation and management of resources and development in those areas <clears throat> to strengthen the elites, then go right ahead. I mean, read up on it. You should know about it. But uh, it, it, they do try to make it fancy with uh, putting the uh, Earth Summit from Rio de Janeiro and a uh, green Agenda 21 as if it's all about putting uh, the Earth first above humans. But their real plan is to actually just take land. That's my interpretation, Agent Zero. Got anything for me there? <laughs> no, I agree completely. Everything pretty much the government's been doing under the guise of, age, of Agenda 21 is just an excuse to disguise to the people what, they, what their real agenda truly is. Um, I'll tell you what, why don't you guys give some examples about how this undermines our, our sovereignty and our constitution? Well, you really you can't. It, it undermines the sovereignty to your con constitution because number one, the United Nations doesn't have this power. Even though we signed a treaty with them after uh, World War II, they they are not a sovereign nation. So for them to make rules like this, it has no effect or binding resolution on on the United States of America. 
Because if they were a sovereign nation, then we would have to abide by the Bill of Rights of the United Nations. We would have to actually listen to everything they say. Our Constitution would actually not exist. Right. Who answers to the UN? It's ridiculous. This, the United Nations was, was formed as the League of Nations under Woodrow Wilson, who was put into office by the elite bankers so they could start the League of Nations. Woodrow Wilson was a banker. So they knew who they got into office, you know, the Rockefellers and the Wahlbergs, the Carnegies and the Rothschilds. So when they, the Rockefellers actually bought the land, built the United Nations, and they are going to implement this social injustice any way they can. So they think that the people, by the UN Charter Agreement, they think that the people will just accept it, and they are accepting it as it goes, and it's taking away their constitutional rights day by day because they're going along with it. Right. Well, uh, Charlie, what's an example of, of some of our constitutional rights that are being stripped away as a result of Agenda 21? Um... One quick description of Agenda 21 uh, is included uh, for a word of caution. It'd be that people have to understand what the social equity is, what social injustice is happening. Is that what you're asking? Like, that's what you want to know, not just... No, I'm, I'm, I'm saying specifically... A, on a broad scale of, of constitutional rights. That's, right, right. Just, I mean, just, give, just, give, just give me a few examples of some of the constitutional rights. Either, either Charlie or Agent Zero, give me a few examples of some of our constitutional rights that are being undermined currently or in the future, or will be in the future, as a result of Agenda 21. Okay. Social justice is described as a right and opportunity of all people, right, Flash? to benefit equally from the resources afforded by the society and the environment. Redistribution of wealth, private property, is a social injustice. Not everyone can build wealth from it. National sovereignty is a social injustice. Universal health care is a social injustice. All part of Agenda 21 policy that have also been implemented into Obamacare. Economic prosperity, uh, Public-private partnerships, special dealings between government and certain chosen corporations, which get huge tax breaks, grants the government power of eminent domain to implement sustainable policy and government-sanctioned monopolies wherever it wants. Local right. sustainability developmental policies, smart growth, wild land projects, resilient cities, regional visioning projects... STAR, which is sustainable communities, these green jobs, green building codes, going green, alternate energy, local visioning, facilitators, regional planning, history preservation, conservation easements, developing rights, sustainable farming, comprehensive planning, growth management consensus. It's all about all this stuff that is basically gift wrap in, you know, this green bullshit is all Agenda 21, and it's all them putting a bunch of uh, policies and laws and stuff in place so they can rule and tell you what to plant, what to do, how to act with your business and your property. And you, if you don't see that happening, I mean, you can't even buy milk in some you know, states from farms. They have, they're, the people, they're shutting down farmers for selling milk from cows, you know? But right. you, you got to see who's behind it, though, right? Right. Flash I C L E I, Local Governments for Sustainability, formerly International Council for Local Environment Initiatives. Communities pay the I C L E I dues to provide local community plans, software training, etc. Addition groups include American Planning Council, the Renaissance Planning Group, International City Management, and the U.S. Mayor's Conference. Right. You know, this, all this originated from the U.N. policy of 1992 in Rio de uh, Janeiro. Right. Rio, Rio de Janeiro. If you want something easier to understand, you, well, you just look at what Bloomberg's doing with this stupid soda, you know? 
All these policies are inherently unconstitutional. So the Fourth Amendment says the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated. And then pretty much what all these, uh, these, these masquerades are on all these fancy names and all this stuff they're making up just as a guise to their inherent violation of the Constitution. They go in there, they say it's these these green acts, they say it's for green, but what they're really doing is seizing your property from you and telling you how to run your property, which is inherently a violation of the Fourth Amendment. And then the Fifth Amendment states, nor shall private property be taken for public use without just compensation. Correct. Which obviously they're not compensating anybody. They're they're kicking people out of their own homes. They're telling them how how to do things now. And the UN isn't even isn't even constitutional in itself. We don't elect these officials. We don't we don't put them in there. The UN we don't we didn't create that as a nation. It's inherently exactly. unconstitutional. And so is the Supreme Court that helps them push this stuff on us. We don't elect them either, and they're there for life. How the hell is that constitutional? Couldn't agree more. That is exactly what I just said. All those names and all those things I listed, they are all made by the United Nations. And like Agent Zero said, none of it. We elect none of them. The United Nations, the UN Charter is BS. They are not a sovereign nation, and all these rules that they are giving to us are totally unconstitutional. Every single thing they implement that we went over... Why do we have to listen to that? We don't. America has to wake up and realize that the United Nations, we know nothing about the Council of Foreign Relations. We know nothing about the trilateral agreement. Yet they give all this fancy foreign policy to all our presidents and all our presidents' cabinets. So, you know. We're the ones breaking our backs to support them. (laughs) Exactly. So if you want to... Get in on this conversation. Make sure you call 201 580 3712 so you can hear Agent Zero explain a little bit more of this Fourth Amendment, which is fantastic. Which maybe next week we can get involved on the NDAA Act because that really destroyed the Fourth Amendment. Oh, but, oh that's, it's dead now. It's yeah, dead. I don't even, it doesn't even exist with that. <laughs> but give us a call 201 580. 3712. Follow Outback Radio on Twitter, Outback Radio, and also follow us on Facebook. Oh, that means we better have a caller soon. <laughs> All righty. So, <clears throat> I, I'm listening. Well, uh, sorry, I wanted to pull up. The 14th Amendment is also violated against the Agenda 21 in that I'm trying to bring up the exact quote here, so I have a little uh, technical difficulties right now. So back to the Fourth Amendment and our property and how it's been continuing and get growing into this snowball effect where pretty much everything that's going on in, in our development as a country is not sustainable in itself. So just to bring up the the, the point that they're, they're trying to trick us into thinking that we're sustainable, but we've actually created a generation that's going to be worse off than, and, and more impoverished than what we are now. And it's all because of this Agenda 21 being pushed by the UN. They want us to be completely dependent on this system they're creating so that we have no voice and no way to, to uh, fight back. Hey, Agent Zero, we got a call. You want to take it? Sure. Okay. Hi, caller. How are you? Where are you calling from? What's I'm your name? Pretty good. I'm calling from Crystal River. Hey, Charlie. Glad to see you finally got your show back up on the air, dude. Why, thank you very much. Yeah, Is this been Kim? wondering how you've been doing and stuff. But no, I sit there. I've been going on here, um, catching up with what you're going into, but I had something else to say on something else. It was on our Second Amendment rights. Fantastic. I'm more than happy to hear it. Okay, because how they word things. They always mess with the wording. You know that as well as I do. All right, they're telling me I cannot have an automatic weapon. I don't own an automatic weapon or an uh, uh, offensive weapon or however you want to call it for uh, warfare. 
My weapon is classified a weapon of defense, or actually it's an implement of husbandry because I use it to put food on my table. Is that yeah. not true? So where would that fall if it's not, uh, you know, a weapon of defense or a weapon of anything else, but it's to put food on my table? How can they sit there and tell me I cannot have my weapon? So, wait, ma- ma'am, um, I'm sorry, I don't know. You You obviously have a relationship with Charlie here, but I, uh, I don't know you. Uh, so you hunt to, to eat? Yes. Okay, and uh, wh- where are you from, ma'am? Uh, originally, I'm from South Jersey. South Jersey, okay. Okay. Uh, where are you yeah, now? There is a lot of fishing in, and hunting down Cipris here County, in the Florida. south, especially Cipris Florida County. there, Flash. But I don't understand where we're going with the automatic weapon. Originally, I guess you're supposed to own any, you know, anything the government can have, you know, the people should have. The reason yeah, the Second Amendment is in place is... Yeah, but they're telling us we can't have them no more. They're, wait, they're telling you... They're telling. I mean, forgive my ignorance, but they're, so you're saying Agenda 21 is saying that you can't even own weapons to I, hunt. I, I sit there. I may have got mixed up on what's in, all in it. I'm trying to figure it out and going on, but mine was just about my Second Amendment rights because I do have been studying that. Okay, that's where I got into, and I just wanted to sit there and I heard you know came across the your your airwaves and it's just I wanted to say hey to my buddy and say hey hey I'm looking at some stuff. You made some sense to me way back when we used to have our talks. And right I'm trying on. to do my research. <laughs> I, I agree that, uh, you know, the government, anything the government can have, you should have. Because the reason why we have the Second Amendment is to actually defend against the governments and the tyranny of government. So yeah. I'm not really cut and dry on automatic weapons. Like, I don't yeah, see the... They're going on automatic rifles, and it's not an, uh, just an automatic rifle or semi-automatic rifle. It's basically getting to the point where now they're, they're telling you you can't even own, like, a shotgun or a, a 20, a 10, 20 out 6 or whatever it is. Right, right. And that I understand where that's coming from because that's all coming from the United Nations Small Arms Treaty. They're trying yeah. to uh, to make sure that there's no, like, gun sales going on and everybody has to register everything. And once there's a registry, they take your weapons. It happened in New York under David Dinkins. It happened mm-hmm. under Hitler. It happened under Stalin, and it, mm-hmm. it, and uh, Obama is very strong on this UN small yeah. arms treaty. I called it that he wouldn't. Uh, when he was running for office, he would say that he wouldn't be for the UN small arms treaty. But once he got elected again, that he would start bringing it up. So I do think that the United Nations. This is under the guise under. The UN, but not under the guise of Agenda 21. I do think the Small Arms Treaty is trying to take most weapons out of the, the citizens' hands. But according to the Second uh, Amendment, we are supposed to have that to stop the tyranny of government. I mean, that's what the revolution was. <laughs> yeah. Because they're getting ridiculous on everything they're doing. Um, my mom just saw something that was posted up that they've got now. They got some sort of like compound, like detention centers that they're building. What's that for? They have and several. Why is it they have built several that, across the country, and they're, yeah, they're, they're, they're they're called FEMA centers. Yeah. And and why is Homeland Security's Hummers more bulletproof than the ones our soldiers are using over in Iraq? And right. why did they buy 1.7 billion rounds of uh, hollow point ammunition? Yeah. Well, I'm curious yeah. about that too. You know, there's a lot yeah, of agencies it's, doing that, too. Ma'am, 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 we're, ma'am we're going to let you go. we got to get to another caller. I'm sorry. The okay, Department no of problem, Agriculture no is also but, buying hey, guys, it, too. It's, I it's insane. Behind. It, it's, it's pretty much a plot to collectivize, collectivize our private property. They're it's, coming it's, after our property, and this Agenda 21 is happening. Yep. Hello, you're on Outback Radio. It's just the genius. Hey, genius. Good to hear from you again. What's going on there? Oh, Dean, my favorite caller. <laughs> We're trying to understand this Agenda 21 and why the go- the uh, elitists are coming after our property. <laughs> they want it all. They want it all. <laughs> they definitely do want it all, but do you yep. think that there is an underlining agenda that they're trying to go through a green galley to get there? I don't know what they're doing, but <laughs> this is crazy. You know, I'm. It definitely is crazy. I 
mean, do you really think they put fluoride in the water to prevent cavities, which is the shit that they told everyone when it happened? No. Nah. No, well, if I mean, going off topic a little bit, fluoride is actually too much fluoride will rot your teeth. People don't know that's why you don't drink fluoride. That's why they tell you to spit it out after you brush your teeth. But, I mean, genius. Can uh, you, maybe you know who, um, who controls the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, which funds the European Union, which funds the United Nations, and funds America. North, South, and Central. I'm not really aware. <laughs> well, the Federal Reserve does. The Federal Reserve... Well, the Federal Reserve is Israel, right? Well, the Federal I mean, Reserve actually funds England, the International Monetary but, Fund. You know, and I they mean, are funding the, the United Nations. So don't you think England. the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds are behind that? I'm sorry, she is there. That again, please. I said the International Monetary Fund is run by the Federal Reserve, which is ran basically by your, you know, Rockefellers, your Wahlbergs, your Rothschilds, you know, J.P. Morgans. They run the Federal Reserve. Right. So if they're running the International Monetary Fund, don't you think that they're involved in uh, population control? And land conservation? I would imagine. <laughs> I mean, it would all make sense, wouldn't it? Yeah, exactly. Now, you heard it there first from the genius himself, right. the dean. <laughs> all right, let's go a little bit more into Agenda 21 there, Flash. All right, go ahead. I got rid of Dean. <laughs> now, the genius calls every once in a while just to let us know... Uh, the updates on the Federal Reserve. I think he had a little bit one-two there, a little too much. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't really understand him. Yeah, he's he's sometimes he's a little difficult to understand. I think I need subtitles. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Genius, you're always welcome on the show. So make sure you got you got us uh, some more next week on the Federal Reserve. Okay. Uh, does anybody know where the uh, Agenda Twenty One? Where did it, this sustainable, sustainable development originate? Agent Zero? Right. All right. Well, Are you asking? Uh, that, yeah, he's asking uh, you. Where the sustainable development originated? I'm not quite sure, so could you educate me on that? Well, the, the term sustainable development was uh, first introduced to the world in the pages... A 1987 report, Our Common Future, produced by the United Nations World Commission on Environmental and Development, authored by the world-renowned Grau Harlem Hunland, the vice president of the World Socialist Party. <laughs> the term was first offered as official UN policy in 1992 in a document called the UN Sustainable Development Agenda 21, issued at the UN's Earth Summit today, which is referred to simply as Agenda 21. What gives Agenda 21 its ruling authority? We went over that. Mm -hmm. but I think we could put it more into brass tacks. More than 178 nations adopted Agenda 21 as official policy during a signing ceremony at the Earth Summit. U.S. President George H.W. Bush, which is Flash's role model, I mean, he loves the guy. Love him. Signed the document for the U.S. In signing each nation's pledge to adopt the goals of Agenda 21. In 1995, President Bill Clinton in compliance with Agenda 21, signed Executive Order Number 12858 to create the President's Council on Sustainable Development in order to harmonize the U.S. environment's policy with the U.N.'s directives as outlined in Agenda 21. Also, the EU directed all agencies of federal governments to work with the state and local community governments in a joint effort 
to reinvent government using the guidelines outlined in Agenda 21. As a result, with the assistance of groups like ICLEIU, uh, Farmer McDowell, sustainable development is now emerging as government policy in every town, county, state in our nation. So give us a call at 201-580-3712. All right, we, we have another call. This might be Dean again, though. I'm not sure. Dean. Hi, Dean. You, you back? Yeah. Yeah, we got to We got to make room for other calls. What's what's uh? You got you got another comment? No, no, I just I, I, I no. Oh, no, no. All right, we got to make room Wait, for other calls, right. man. You're always you're always welcome to call, but we got we got we got to let you go. Okay, take care. Fantastic. I love hearing from Dean. He always puts me in a good mood. <laughs> he always sounds like he's in a good mood. <laughs> you know, he's got that moonshine over there. But I also want to uh, give a shout out to uh, the listeners uh, tomorrow night at um, what is it? Eight o'clock, Flash. It's uh, ten to eleven. Oh, uh, you're going late, huh? It's always We're going been ten to eleven on uh, Corrosive Radio. They're going to be uh, asking for callers to call in with their craziest drug experiences that they've ever had. So from ten to eleven, you listen live on Corrosive Radio www.corrosiveradio.com and call in with your craziest experience that you've ever had. I know I'm calling in because I got one that nobody else can top. I know that for a fact. <laughs> so this, this, do one, that. this one doesn't involve the time you locked me in the bathroom, does it? No, no, no. <laughs> First of all, has nobody locked you in the bathroom. You locked yourself in the bathroom. But those flowers were very bright that day. I will give you those are some powerful shrooms, man. <laughs> but no, we should. That, that is a great story. I don't know how you got out of that window. I, I, I think I think I just crawled out the window. <laughs> I'm like, where is this? You? Lock-? I couldn't get in because you locked the door. But fantastic. Call tomorrow from 10 to 11. That's Corrosive Radio. It's a comics audience. I know there's comics out there like uh, Randy Green, perhaps, that may be listening to the show. Definitely call in. I know you guys have your own sketch comedy. Uh, and also, Friday night, uh, 8 o'clock p.m., is a KMDT Geek, Geek Blast, Blast, where they talk about everything from comic books to movies to collections and memorabilia so make sure you listen to that also because I heard they're going to have a very special guest which I'm not at privy to tell you about but give us a call right now at 201-580-3712 so we can uh, discuss this Agenda 21 topic and any other topic you really want to discuss because this Agenda 21 is deep and a little hard to understand so we would definitely like to hear from the outside I think we should talk about how President Obama's utilizing Agenda 21 to uh, to push his uh, squash of the American suburb to pay for his failing cities. And I think Detroit is a nice example of that right now. It's only a matter of time before Detroit completely implodes upon itself since it's already bankrupt. And yeah. Let's attempt to bail it out. I mean, he's bailing out a city. First we bail out a bank. And then we're gonna bang out, bail out a city. Now, this now, I this this sounds to me like socialism, kind of like we have socialism creeping up on us in this country where we live in a welfare state. And I think um, Obama's uh, income equalization agenda for our country and uh, is uh, destroying us. Right. Before- yeah. Well, that's what I brought up as a guy who actually uh, who started, you know. This whole idea of Agenda 21, he was, he's the leader of the socialistic party of, the, uh, of the Europe and the world. So <laughs> he, Obama's definitely fitting under that platform. Oh, totally. The anti-sprawl movement. Right? <laughs> right. Uh, uh, he's working with several new organizations, Building One America. That's, what's, that's what one is called, Building One America. And they're quietly working with the Obama administration for an, an ambitious overhaul of social reform on our country. It's scary. 
pretty much uh, he wants to force suburban residents into densely, you know, into the cities. He wants to destroy the middle class completely and push us back into the Great Depression, if not worse. I completely agree. Scary, man. I think he's doing it all. It's, it's all under all under the guises of the United Nations. I think that that Obama is actually the first person to actually sit on the chair of the United Nations. He's the first American president to actually sit in the chair of the United Nations. All right. Can I ask a question about Detroit? Go ahead. Sure. All right. Now, Detroit was a self-sufficient uh, city when the auto industry was thriving. When the well, American apparently, auto- apparently it's thriving better than ever right now, too, which <laughs> makes me hard to understand as, as how it's doing so well, and yet Detroit is going bankrupt. Because <laughs> the trickle-down effect's not really working. It's the money's being kept in the pockets of the people and the companies, not going into the Detroit people pockets. True, true. <laughs> well, let me let me ask let me just ask a stupid question because I mean this is your territory; it's not mine. What about what about putting tariffs on all imported cars, all Hondas, Suzukis, Toyotas? Well, they, they, well, you know, we've always said that that they should do that. But what I think with the uh, <clears throat> geopolitical trilateral, you know, tariffs, what Richard Nixon did with China, and over there starting that free trade. That's where it started from, and I don't think they're going to get away with, from that because that's the, uh, you know, the the only way that we started really doing business with them over there, right? Was from when Nixon went over there. Right. But I don't know. I know that uh, this year Detroit declared, uh, I think it was Chapter Nine bankruptcy, right? They were eighteen billion in debt. Oh yikes. <laughs> and that and that's coming from the governor Rick Schneider. Mm, right. <laughs> Schneider went on, you know, Detroit is the heart of Michigan and if Detroit is in trouble then Michigan is in trouble. So Detroit is the largest American city to ever declare bankruptcy, which I was not aware that any other city ever did that. I don't think so. Officially uh, I'm not heard of municipalities uh right. declaring bankruptcy. For you know, squandering and their their uh, you know their budgets and and corruption, but I guess that's what that's what's going on now at the at the largest level you can get in our country, <laughs> a city. Right. Yeah, because it says uh, officially succumbing to job losses in the auto industry, decades of population fight, right. and the collapse of revenue to cover everything from policing to street lighting. By the end of this article, the reader will come to see, you know, why Detroit was once the pride of America. And that's sad. At the height of Detroit's success as a city, the city was a representation of America's middle class dominance throughout the world. It was the greatest manufacturing city ever seen on the planet. Detroit made cars that were the envy of the world. And, and today, they destroyed it. Yeah. They destroyed it on purpose to destroy the middle class. This isn't something new. This has been going on for a long time. Well, I think that the globalists did it on purpose, like you said, right? Of course. They they want – I mean they're all helping each other. The global elite, it doesn't matter. They're from different countries. Nationalities mean nothing. They don't give a fuck what their nationality is. They don't have nationalities. It's money and power. That's their nationality. And, and they're the ones behind it. In reference to Agenda 21, the globalists murdered Detroit through various free trade agreements through NAFTA, GATT, and CAFTA. America auto manufacturers were free to ship their factories overseas in search to near slave labor markets. Right. And the passage of these free market agreements probably made it possible to even hire foreign slave laborers. And without the now prohibited tariffs that you're talking about flash on imports the globalists controlled corporate corporations they could ship slave labored manufactured products back into the united states <laughs> you know our government failed to protect the manufacturers and the net effect is that we are beginning to see third world conditions inside the united states in cities such as destroyed 
and it's spreading like wildfire and under the guise of Agenda 21 to rebuild those cities and populations, they're going to first fix the environment, but also buy out the land. Right. Since the 1970s, America has lost 86% of its manufacturing jobs. 86%. Mm-hmm. Actually, the globalists have been trying to get rid of the American tariffs for 100 years in the name of free trade. Uh, if you all want to figure that out, look up the pain Aldrift tariff. This is an important part of our history. A year later, we got what is known as what I always talk about, the Federal Reserve Act of 1913, and then real fun began. (laughs) Tariffs used to pay for our national debt. This is no longer happening. We replaced tariffs with the income tax amendment. If you are understanding any of these historical facts on this timeline, you have to be getting angry, people. Mm -hmm. And who's to blame? Are you getting angry at all? You and I should not be paying for income tax tariffs. Tariffs should be paying for the national debt. We are paying income tax because the elites wanted free trade, and it is our duty to pay so that they can maximize their profits. Because if you look at IMF in the United Nations, they actually put our Social Security number on the stock market. They call it the stock market because we are stock. We are cattle. We are workers. We are the worker drone bees. We are paying these tariffs. The tariffs should pay. The third leg of this scheme was to introduce fiat currency where bankers could reinvent money out of thin air, which caused our money to now be worthless four cents for what used to be the dollar. And the only other person that even remotely talks about this or even teaches young people or people around there is Ron Paul. And, you know, a lot of people call him loony and crazy and this and that. But I give that man credit because he does actually speak the truth. He tells you like it is. And he's never once gone against what he thinks, you know, is is true to himself. Yeah. And it. Well, they they just make them out to be crazy. They just they just say that to 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 try and prevent people from from listening to him. They they want to discriminate against him, label him as something negative, and then discredit him completely under the rouse that he's being crazy. Right. But like he's the, not crazy. He's the only one that talks about this kind of thing. You know, the Federal Reserve and the Fed, which is run by the United Nations. You know, it's. But getting back to the Agenda 21 goals, it all goes back to what Agent Zero was saying and how Flash was talking about how come there's no tariffs, how come we don't do this. Back to Detroit, which helps us understand where we are headed. You may not live in an area of this country in which the jobs are headed overseas. However, you have been targeted for deindustrialization through Obama's cap and trade policies and his Obamacare, which has declared he will initiate through executive order as this president continues to carry out his Agenda 21 goals. If you ever let Agenda 21 get a grip on your city, the result will be like Detroit and will result in abject poverty as a result of green zones, wild lands, promises of smart growth, saving the planet from global warming, economic growth inhibitors, etc. All things we said earlier. By the way, the globalists have the guts to build a $25 million light rail in Detroit right in the middle of this rotting corpse right <laughs> now. <laughs> wow, it's amazing. Incredible. So if you want to call in and get down on this Agenda 21 Call at 201-580-3712. I mean, but that's our government's, like, uh, that's our government's M.O. That's what they do. They use fear-mongering to, uh, to scare the people into believing there's a threat, and then they create all these laws and, and, and uh, policies and all this stuff 
in response to this threat, here's how we'll fix the threat. And they, they pretty much make the American people think that they're the ones, in fact, pushing for the people by helping them fight this made-up threat. So they used it with Oklahoma City bombing to scare us into implementing Homeland Security. And that policy started where we start, we're moving towards the Patriot Act. That's what helped us go there. And then they use Agenda 21 to take our property. So they're violating our rights on so many levels and using the same tactics. It's just why don't people care? Why do the majority of people just want don't they don't want to listen and they don't want to believe their government is actually doing this, conspiring against them? I and think it, helping them. Yeah, it's the bankers that are actually in control, and people need to realize that. Mm-hmm. Money. Money, right. Look for an organization such as a World Bank to loan Detroit, like Agent Zero said, the $18 billion it needs in order to regain temporary financial sovereignty. It's going to be like but, Greece, a, exactly. a little Greece. But however, without a viable industry to maintain this economic foundation of the city, the city will predictably default on its uh, future loan obligations. What follows is a glimpse into future of all American cities as an increasing number of cities default on their rescue loans, mm. a cute way to call bailout loans. Yep. And when this policy entitled defaults on its loans, the lending agency takes possession of the collateral, which is pledged over the loan. Most often the infrastructure is the collateral most thought after by the banks, by Agenda 21. When banksters typically take over, a political entity like they did in Bolivia, right. they will quadruple the cost of water, astronomically hype the prices of utility, and seize control of public transportation in order to jack up the rights to the ridership. Yep. For people who cannot afford a car or need transportation to get to work, this is Detroit's future, and it will soon be our futures. I mean, I can go on into this about the cap and trade, mm-hmm. but what is wrong going on when, you know, we are a... What a, you know, a developed country, right? We are the highest you can get. But you've still got places like Bangladesh and Haiti and all these other, you know, are they ever going to, like, move up? Or are they just set there on purpose? You can actually see these same traits in our social economic uh, levels and uh, structures, you know, middle class, high class. Nobody ever moves up. And it's like that around the world also. You know, nobody's like, oh, I can't wait to go to Mississippi on vacation. And nobody (laughs) says that about Bangladesh either. But I mean, I'm 35 years old and I've never heard, you know, nothing positive coming out of these areas of the world or the states, right or wrong. Like they don't better themselves at all. It's like they're kept at this, uh, to make it sound easy, they're kept at a, uh, um, they're kept in a state of paralysis. Pretty much. Yeah, this, Economic yeah, this paralysis. of like minimum wage for, for countries and states, you know? Pretty much. It's like it's implemented to keep it there on purpose. Of course. How are they going to get out of that? I mean, how is, how is Haiti going to get out of that if they I don't mean, have I, I would, help? But wouldn't you think that if the, all this money that they're donating and these big rich celebrities are donating – you don't think that they have they they found any type of fossil fuel, you know, or yeah, any anything that, that these yeah. countries have, or they just yeah. drain them dry? Both, <laughs> they do both. <laughs> right? <laughs> they went. I mean, back to Greece. They went into Greece and took all of Greece's oil. Greece had oil, and the EU and, and made a deal with the Greece's lackluster president, who who then gave up all the. Oil. All the the oil that they found to the to this corporation and the EU and the, and then it was gone. So yeah, they, they, know, they keep talking about the EU is going to go down too, but the EU just keeps on sliding by. Yeah, they're letting it though. Back to what you said though, they they it's all done on purpose. If they want you to fall, you'll fall. They did that to Detroit. They on right. purpose. They, it's but I also believe purpose. that that Agent Zero it has a lot to. Do, it, it also goes into effect with uh, affirmative action. Right. I believe affirmative action was put there to keep uh, you know, people at a level where, of poverty where they will never come out of. I mean, maybe that's a whole other topic for another show, but I mean, 
they've been it just goes back to like well why isn't anybody getting better but if you look at affirmative action then they've never moved up past this uh you know middle class line right they don't it's want them like to. they put these policies in place to keep you at bay right I mean, it, it, if they want you to be successful, you're going to be successful. If they want you to be on top, you'll be on top. I mean, it's kind of like analogous with the music industry. Why Why all these performers get found? How do they get found? And why do people with, like, huge amounts of talent? Don't, what, right? You know, don't, right. They want. They pick and choose what, who they groom to to further their agenda. It all goes back to what the people on top want. And and what they want is to control everything. And I mean, New World Order, not trying to be like, you know, the, the Illuminati right now, but let's, they want to control everything. It's, it's being implemented by the UN, this Agenda 21, so that everybody can fall into this collectivism of private property, and they can, all these countries can simultaneously seize the, the, the citizens' property and, and implement control and a firm grasp for, for to set the framework and the foundation for a unilateral government that controls everybody, the entire world. I hey, agree. Agent Zero, we're going to have to work on your mic during the week because right now okay. you're, you're coming in really jarbled, okay? All right. If it, I just want to to explain the U.S. support to... So we can actually look at it as a Agenda 21 in closing on a local level, on a national level, and on a global level. Yep. Local level, the implementation of Agenda 21 is intended to evolve action at international levels, local levels. Um, some national and state levels have... Le- legislated or advised that local authorities take steps to implement this plan locally as recommended in chapter 28 of of its actual document. But these programs are often known as local agenda 21s called, quote, LA-21. For example, in the Philippines, the plan is Philippines Agenda 21, and the group of the ICLEI, Local Governments for Sustainability, and today in its members comes from the Philippines, 1,200 cities, towns, and counties. 70 countries is widely regarded as the paragon of Agenda 21 implementation. On a national level, mm-hmm. Australia, for example, is signatory to Agenda 21, and 88 of its municipalities subscribe to the ICLEI an organization that promotes Agenda 21 globally. Australia's membership is second only to that of the United States. <laughs> we're, we're just a fraction of England. You know what I mean? That's, we, we, we actually pay taxes to them still. But oppositions to Agenda 21 in Australia is not covered in major media outlets through groups such as Act Australia, Fringe Political Organization, has labeled Agenda 21 as a threat to freedom. Mm-hmm. So if you have uh, U.S. support like the United States is a signatory country to United to Agenda 21, but Agenda 21 is not a treaty. The Senate was unable to hold a formal debate or vote on it. It is therefore not considered to be a law under Article 5 of the U.S. Constitution, in which Agent Zero went over earlier. Several congressmen, including Nancy Pelosi and senators, however, have spoken in Congress in support of Agenda 21. These include John Kerry and Senator Harry Reid. Uh, they will keep on pr- trying to push this on us, but we all have to remember that there are people against this and that are trying to stop it globally. Outback Radio is number one, corrosive radio, trying to stop this kind of stuff to, or at least educate people. Um, the John Birch Society is out there trying to stop this. In uh, U.S. opposition during the last decade, opposition to Agenda 21 has increased within the United States at the local, state, and federal levels. The Republican National Committee has adopted a resolution opposing Agenda 21, and the Republican Party platform stated, we strongly reject the United the UN uh, Agenda 21 as an erosiveness 
to the American sovereignty, which, God damn it, I think I said sovereignty a hundred times this show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Several state and local governments have considered or passed motions and legislations opposing Agenda 21. Alabama became the first state to prohibit government's participation. Ugh, participation. Say it for me, Flash. Participate. Uh, Participa- Participa- oh, now you got me going. <laughs> Many other states, including Arizona, are drafting uh, close into passing a ban on Agenda 21. Activists, some who have been associated with the Tea Party, John Burke Society, and the New York Times and the Huffington Post have said that Agenda 21 is a conspiracy by the United Nations to deprive individual of property rights. Columnists in the Atlantic have linked opposition to wait, Agenda wait, wait, 21. Wait, 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 back up. That was, that, that was in the Huffington Post? I know. It's scary, right? I, I mean, you wanted a bibliography. I gave you one. This that was about, Huffington- and who, who was the reporter on that one? Uh, well, you I know, it doesn't know. matter. We got another call. Yeah, I can go into it if you want me to, but it's there. Hello, you're not, you're not back radio. Yes, yes, am I speaking to uh, Mr. Charlie Outback? Mr. Outback is here. Hello, Mr. Outback, how are you tonight? Good, how are you, sir? Doing very well, doing very well. You have to excuse me, I haven't uh, listened to any of the show. I uh, called a little bit late. Uh wanted to offer any opinions that possibly could. Uh, I'm Christian Providence, by the way. And uh, what was the subject for tonight? Agenda 21, sir. What was it? Agenda? Agenda 21. United Nations attempt to undermine the sovereignty of every nation on this planet. Oh, geez. That's tough to sum up in a phone call. That's more of a thesis. Uh, yeah, this has been a rough one, but we're guiding through it with ease. It's basically sustainable development. Taking our property rights without us knowing it. We went over the uh, collapse of Detroit as maybe one of the foreseeable future. You know what I mean? So do you have any Uh, thoughts on Agenda 21, which is a non-binding, voluntary, implemented action of the plan of the United Nations with regard to sustainable development? It is a product of the UN conference environment held in Rio de Janeiro in 1992. It's a multilateral organization, and it's individual governments around the world that can be executed at local, national, and global levels. The 21 refers to 21st century, and has been affirmed in a 300-page document divided that this U.N. charter is trying to get passed through the Congress so they can start taking away our land. And, you know, in the guise of green energy and green this, green that. Sorry, I had to talk fast, but do you have a uh, opinion on the Agenda 21? Uh, probably my uh, same opinion on every big, uh, big government. Um, you know, we can squabble all we want back and forth about it, uh, but the truth of the matter is that uh, action needs to be done, and unfortunately the American people are not willing to do that yet. So until then, we all of our information, all of our land, and everything will slowly be collected. Um, I'm sure you know the presidential orders that can be placed in act if need be, and they're all scary as well. Um, these sorts of uh, they've uh, they've been against us for some time. Um, it's just now that it's coming out again. Now that the American people are starting to know more, um, the question is, will they do more? And uh, I can only hope that we have more listeners on your show because those are the people more likely to do so. Well, That's about the best opinion I can give you. Well, Chris, you know, uh, spread the word about Outback Radio. Definitely, oh, Chris. We need callers like you. You're definitely a well, well-influenced person, and I wish you would have called earlier because we could have gotten into a very good debate because the show is rounding its end. And uh, we need more that, people but, uh, like you I'll out there sure that to, have uh, a voice and a good opinion. Uh, all right, Chris. Thanks, thanks for the call. All right, man? Oh, no problem, guys. Take care. Uh, you take care. All right. <laughs> All right. So, Charlie, Agent Zero, you want you want you want to uh, sum, you got about two minutes here. You want to sum this? You got about a minute left. You want to sum the show up? I mean, just wake up, people. Let's see. You know, like everything, evidence is right before your before your eyes. That's it. I mean, it's there. Well, I can say that tonight's show was a fantastic. Uh, 
Fantastic show, and for Jumpin' Johnny Flash behind the glass, and for uh, Agent Zero, I speak for Charlie Outback and all the Outback Radio listeners. If you're listening to this right now, you are the resistance. Good night. All right, guys. Good night. Good night. Yes, yeah, so yes, yeah, so I'm telling you. The U.S. decision to pump 600 billion freshly printed dollars into its economy. Now, the move is an attempt to revive the country's finances, but will result in a devaluation of the dollar. We'll construct a legal regime to make indefinite detention legal. But I think it's time we ask ourselves if we still know the freedoms that were intended for us by the founding fathers.